Hello and thank you for joining us for Art Rocks with me, James Fox Smith from Country Roads Magazine. With the long-awaited opening of the Cary Sauraj Community Arts Centre, creatives in Baton Rouge and around the capital region got 12,000 square feet of inspiring new headquarters to represent them. Many have worked tirelessly to support the good works of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge and the organisations that it supports. But the facility, which doubles as the Arts Council's headquarters and an exciting event and exhibition space, is named for longtime supporter Kerry Suraj. Come with us to find out how the Kerry Suraj Community Arts Centre delivers for the Baton Rouge community. The old fire station had its charm. It was a place that a lot of memories were made, but what's so fascinating about this new space is that we're able to go from 4,000 square feet to over 12,000 square feet and diversify our offering. In our old space, we had just one big room. Now we have a dance studio space, a black box, an artist studio. We can really offer so much more to our community. Black boxes are named that way because if you paint a room completely black, then you can manipulate the colors and theatrical lighting and you can create all of these different scenarios, whether you're creating a dance performance or a theatrical performance. We have a sprung floor that's also portable, but it allows for dancers to come in and be able to work on a floor that is safe for them. That's why you see also mirrors in our black box because we can convert it to a dance studio space. We also have a film screen so people can screen films and it's really great to be able to completely make that space dark except for what you're seeing on the screen. We love that so many different entities from opera to the symphony. The symphony has a candlelight concert series in there where they have a string quartet and the only light in the room are over a thousand candles. What we want about this space, not only to retain the talent we already have here in Baton Rouge, but also to make Baton Rouge and the Capital Region an appealing place for artists to come in, a vibrant space where they can build work and where they can build community. And so this Vagabond Dance troupe being formed were originally in New Mexico and they've relocated to Baton Rouge which we love because that means we're drawing people from the outside into the state of Louisiana and they had a really interesting model they like to be out in the community and do this site specific work and they like to spread quality dance it's really hard as dancers to find a space that's affordable that works in the time frame that we need it the mirrors the bars the sound, there's so much that goes into it. Having this space here was a no-brainer in some ways. We were like, we have to come here because this is half the battle. This has really given us an opportunity to reach the broader Baton Rouge community and that's super important to us where we are as artists, but it's also deeply aligned with the mission of the company. Our mission is really to redefine what the relationship of dance is and that's really bringing dance to everybody, making it a value that anyone can access, whether you're coming from impoverished areas or if you're coming from affluency. The connection point is the human body, and the connection point is our affinity with ourselves and our affinity to other people. So I've always kind of been partly in the arts and partly in nonprofit work, and so the connection point for coming into town was how do we take what we want and what we envision can happen with dance and can happen with the art form, and where do we bring that? What community is open to that? And really, Renee represented this person who was coming out of the community to say, we want this value for Baton Rouge. We also have a grant from the Pennington Foundation to do Dance for All. And that program is also gonna be fostered through this building. But Dance for All is providing dance opportunities to people who may typically not see themselves as being able to participate, whether they're visually impaired, whether they're hearing impaired, whether they have maybe a muscular uh, dystrophy or some other impairment that seems like typically you would not be able to dance. And there's a really wonderful person in this community, Shannon Feet is her name, and she has a program and a curriculum that we're gonna have her facilitate so that more dance schools and more dance companies can adopt 
the curriculum. A real game changer and a real mandate for us when we renovated this space was the sound and digital recording studio. We have such a great culture in our region of singer-songwriters. And these singer-songwriters were then having to go to Atlanta or go to Memphis or go to these other recording studios where they could actually produce work and then have it streamed or drop in that way that was commercially viable. So we said, why don't we have an accessible space like that right here so that people don't have to leave and we can retain our talent here. Our Shell Gallery is this beautiful exhibit space that's got both very, very high ceilings, there's a section of it where you could have a multi-dimensional sculptural work, and then a gallery work in the same way that you might see looking at two-dimensional visual art. And so we love that space. We rotate about every month or two months. We wanted to keep the integrity of the space the same as much as possible, but we just added some natural light. The point of the triangle was extended by glass. Um, and that's to allow so much more natural light for artists and for viewers. And then also we added a rooftop terrace. We love that Baton Rouge is discovering rooftops and the way to look at our city from that vantage point. And so we just built that facility as well onto the building. We wanted to have a space where people could be messy, have their stuff out and leave it and be inspired and then also be in close proximity to other artists so they may have a conversation about challenges in working on a particular piece or whatever may be the case. And we wanted the artists to create the spaces for themselves. Sometimes we'll have artists, they want to have some privacy and they want to build walls around what they do. Some really like the interaction and they're very open. In large scale pieces, you want to be able to keep it up. You don't have to pick it up and put it away. We wanted to have that opportunity as well. We have been working in a, a smaller space at my home and not being able to really step back and breathe, I felt my work was being very confined. So having the room to step out and go a little bit larger really helped me advance my, my art style. Before it was just mainly online marketing, trying to find people, go and find people. But now that I'm here in this space, there's always someone stopping in and I love talking to people. Every artist just wants to be able to show their work, express their work. I just want people to feel what I'm feeling and build a community around that. And there's a music studio right next door to me. So there was a guy here a few months ago that was creating an album. And I would just go in there and just listen. You know, when I hear music, I start to see colors. So I'll take that sometimes with me and bring it in here. The way that we work being a resident in the space is that we have a price per square foot so if you want to map out, I need this much square footage, then we work that rental agreement up for you. And we usually like to do three months minimum. Um, but if you want to do community work, then we deduct that hourly rate from your rent or your lease so that it's affordable. The art world is a very volatile. You can be at the top one day and then the next you could be, you know, towards the bottom. You just have to keep uh, create and that's the, the key, but uh, for me personally, it, uh, it's definitely affordable. One of the needs that came up was that the Baton Rouge Symphony did not have a home for its offices. It had been in various places in the city. And they needed rehearsal space. They already had a performance space and we were one block away from the River Center Theater where they perform. And so it seemed like such a natural fit. And so we talked to the symphony and we came up with a plan. And so they are long-term tenants in this building. We not only are close to the concert hall that has been our home for decades, but also to be part of the energy that's part of downtown, as well as just part of this living art space that we get to call our office space in our home. Um, it provides a, also an extra venue for us with the Black Box Theater that's here. Um, and just as a great inspirational space for creativity and for our musicians. Prior to being here, our music library was actually in a temperature controlled facility that was not connected to where our office space were. So to have our music library actually in our office space where we have access to that music and are able to do all of the library work that we need to do, getting the music out to the musicians and whatnot, is, makes our workflow so much better and is a huge asset to us just to have access to our music on a consistent basis. We thought it was really important to name this building for someone who had contributed not only to the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge, but had been a force for good in the arts and in culture to build it 
in our community for many years that it would be a celebration of that person's legacy. In doing the research, it definitely became very clear that Carrie Siraj was in fact that person. He has contributed to the Louisiana Arts and Science Museum here, LSU Museum of Art, regionally beyond Baton Rouge to celebrate local artists, but also to bring in artists of note to this community. And he's done it humbly, and he's done it quietly, but we've had so many people in the community contribute to this building and to its repurposing. And then we decided we wanted to have a very unique display of who those people were. Some of those contributors contributed a minimal amount up to great amounts, and we thought that was important too. And so we talked to Michaeline Walsh, we know her as Mikey Walsh, who's a professor at LSU and a wonderful ceramicist. She came up with this very beautiful display and it has the names of all of our donors and supporters on that wall. We love that they're part of the community and the artwork as well. We wanted to honor the original peoples of this land in that installation and so Mikey took clay from the Mississippi Riverbed and created some of the figures, you see little faces and figures on that work, and that is to honor the Mississippians who were here around the time of Poverty Point.